All right, so you should have this in front of you right now. Uh, sorry that I'm doing it video-wise, but um, I think it's actually the best way to explain everything. So uh, as you saw in your cheat sheet on the back of this, one through nine is just two commands. It can be uh, affirmative or negative, and it can also be irregular or regular. So Laura, blink las flores aquí, por favor the to command and it's indicated that it's to because I used a comma after her name so I'm clearly talking to Laura uh, and if I'm using somebody's first name then I'm obviously um, using the familiar term uh, the familiar uh, form of the verb with them so uh, the to affirmative command of poner it's an irregular is pon uh, and then this part is what you'd fill out with my original answer so let's say you put pone then the reason why it's wrong is uh, poner is irregular in the to affirmative command form. Okay, and you could just keep filling that out. So please take notes on this. It'd probably be helpful for you. Uh, can use the help. All right. So Julio, again, this is obviously two. And again, you know what? All of these are two. So I'm going to stop saying that 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 they're two. Um, so Julio no blank decir uh, is a go verb, so it's not necessarily irregular, quote unquote, in the yo and the uh, to negative command, but it's a go verb, so it does look different. So the yo form of decir is digo, and then uh, so I take the verb to the yo form, then I turn it into the opposite ending. So no digas mentiras por favor. Mama blank cama para mejorarte por favor. Here is your other hint right there. It says mejorarte. Uh, again, these are all in the to form, so that would be guardes, or excuse me, guarda, because I'm telling her to stay in bed, not to not stay in bed. Uh, so guarda, cama, por favor. Hermanito, <clears throat> again, this is an irregular. It's ve. There's no accent. The only accent is on se. Um, so hermanito, ve a Walgreens para recoger mi medicina. Again, it is uh, irregular, um, and it is in the affirmative form. There's no no there, so uh, it's going to be they. Uh, hopefully, y'all learn that Vin Diesel has 10 weapons, uh, and that's a great way to memorize those uh, irregular affirmative two commands. All right, Liliana, come. Oh, no comas, nada. Sorry, I didn't see the no there. So comer in the yo form would be como, and then I'm going to put the opposite ending on it, so no comas. Uh, papa, I'm telling my dad to smell the flowers. Uh, so the yo form, or excuse me, the usted form would be huele. Uh, this is just an irregular verb. Obviously, it doesn't look like that. Some of y'all might have just put ole, uh, which is just a way to say yay. So that's wrong. Uh, Miguelcito, no blank. So this is another irregular. By the way, does anybody remember that escoger, verbs that end in G-E-R follow those rules like this. So the yo form of escoger is escojo. Oh, nobody saw that J coming. And then I'm going to change that to A-S. So no escojas. And then Fernando, no pagues. This is a cargar and czar verb. So it's going to end in G-U-E-S. And then Mariana, no seas. So ser is another irregular negative two command. Um, huh, you're welcome for that bell. All right. So that is the negative two section. Next section, escuchan estudiantes. And the little um, tip off told you that these numbers 10 through 14 are all uh, forms of commands and they are um, they have some reflexive pronouns. So now you have to decide whether it's to or usted or ustedes, uh, negative or affirmative, and then also add a reflexive pronoun if it happens to be a reflexive verb. So escuchen estudiantes, uh, una hoja de papel. So I'm not telling them anything reflexively, so it would be saquen. Uh, again, it is a cargarnsar verb, so it's going to be uh, Q-U-E-S, and then I'm going to remove the S and add the N because it's escuchen estudiantes, plural subject. Next one, ustedes no vayan a la fiesta, por favor. Now, 
Don't forget that usted and ustedes commands don't change because of negative. Um, what does change is where you put the pronoun if a verb is negative and if it's affirmative, and we'll see that in a minute. So this is still going to be vayan because of the ear in the ustedes form. The no doesn't mean anything to me there. Señora Rispe, no blank, tanta aspirina. Okay, so now I'm talking to somebody and I'm using señora. So obviously I want to use the usted form. So I'm going to do tomo. I'm going to drop the O and I'm going to add E to the end. So tome. Tome is your overall correct answer. Okay? And you don't need the S because it's negative. I would only put the, the S on a negative 2 command. All right, um, let me get another one of these that's not marked on. Okay, so number 13 is Señor y Señora Lopez, so it's going to be Ustedes. I'm using their Usted names, um, and also there's plural of them, and also it says Ustedes right there. Uh, last thing, since we don't study vosotros here, if I'm talking to anything more than one person and it doesn't include the word yo, then it's the Ustedes command, okay? So, um, I didn't say no at all here. So if the, if the command is affirmative, then you're going to attach the pronoun to the end, and if it was negative, then I would put it in front. So, then, then is how I would say, like, patch up, right? So that gets rid of that part of the verb. And then I have to add the say. It's me te say, me te say, nos say, right? So that's where the say is coming from. Uh, so I'm going to put say. And then I'm going to cover up that pronoun and say, what did it normally sound like? Then, then. So I want my e, uh, my, my first e to have the accent. So then, then say. Uh, another way y'all like to look at it is count three, uh, count three vowels back. As long as there's only one pronoun attached to the end, that works. All right, Mario, no blank. Now, in this case, I'm talking directly to Mario, so I'm going to say te, and it's negative, by the way. That's why I'm putting te in front of the verb. And so I've gotten rid of that, and now I've got fracturar. And this is a really easy verb, so no te fractures. Okay, I don't need any accents. The only time I need an accent is when I'm adding something to the end there. Okay, um, hola muchachos. Okay, so now I'm talking to multiple people, right? And uh, and so that would be the ustedes command. So that would be huelan because it was in oler. Uh, and these are the ones. So by the way, that's uh, numbers on your little cheat sheet here. Numbers 15 through 20 have all pronouns, and you have to find out, uh, all have pronouns, excuse me, and you have to read it to find out which pronouns they have. <coughs> so, uh, hey guys, there's an, a really strong order, odor over here. Smell it. It is referring to the odor, so huelanlo, and I need to add the accent three back. Franco, esas palabras son muy malas. No blank digas. So I'm referring to Franco. Uh, these Those words are very dirty. Don't say them. So them is referring to those words, which are feminine and plural. And there's another hint on that. So no las and then digas. The next one, number 17, abuela. Um, hold on. Abuela usted, so this is definitely usted, so, and it says no, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that say and put it right there, so no se, and then I don't want her to get sick, right? Enferme. In this case, I didn't have to do anything um, to find another pronoun. It just said, grandmother, you need to stay in bed, don't get sick, okay? There's nothing else that she needs to do. If there was a different verb here, then maybe that would dictate that I would need another pronoun. But in this case, I'm just saying don't get sick. All right. Mario and Tina, ustedes. Okay. Uh, Y'all didn't do the homework. Do it now. That's what the now means, right? And hacer means to do. So do it now. Uh, how do I say this in the yo form would be hago. But I'm going to change that into agan because I'm talking to the ustedes form. And I'm adding 
la on the end of it, so hagan la. Okay? Even though there's a no at the beginning of the sentence, there's a dash here. I'm saying y'all didn't do your homework. Do it now. Okay? Next one. And by the way, on your test, I don't think we're going to give you this verb here at the end. You have to read the first sentence. Um, well, okay, in some of them. Like right here, if it says hicieron, I'm not going to give you hacer. So you need to be able to recognize those irregular preterites. All right. Doctor Mendez, la señora Balboa, oops, that should be a period. La señora Balboa quiere otro doctor. No la atiendas, uh, la tienda más. So la atienda más. Okay. There's no accent here, and I'm referring to her as the person that I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to ask you to not tend to her anymore or help her anymore. Um, it doesn't need to be lay. I probably wouldn't take off, but again, those are called leístas, and those are people who are using it the wrong way. It would be la there. So no la tienda, por favor. Uh, más. Okay. And again, it was negative, so I've got my pronoun first and then my verb. Estudiantes. So this is going to be ustedes. Estudiantes, el, doc, uh, el doctor sacó una radiografía del paciente. The, the doctor took a uh, x-ray. So analyze it, please. And oops, sorry about the, I don't even know what's going on there. Analyze. That's how you spell it. Sorry. So, um, okay, analyze the x-ray. Analisen. And then it's an affirmative command, so I'm going to attach the, what am I telling them to analyze? The x-ray, which is feminine and singular. Analisen la, okay? And this was a Cargar and Czar, which is why it has a C there. Uh, and then I need to add my accent, so analisen la, okay? Next one. And these are the harder ones. These have two pronouns that I need to replace, so I really need to understand what's going on here. So Anna. Why didn't you tell me the information about the project? So now I'm going to say, tell me it. Because again, if I'm adding multiple pronouns, I'm going to go in this order. I'm going to go reflexive. Then I'm going to go indirect object pronoun, which is the me tele. And then I'm going to go direct object pronoun, which is the lo, la, los, las, okay? So in this case, I'm saying tell me it. It is the direct object pronoun, so I'm going to say me next. So dime, and then la, because it's information. So dime la ya, and so it would be dime la ya. I just have to add that accent back. Next one, doctors, this patient needs uh, pills for the pain. Prescribe them to her is what I'm trying to get you to say, right? So... I'm saying it in the ustedes commands because it says doctores. So receten, because it was an AR verb. Um, and then I'm going to give them to her, which would be lay. So it would originally say receten, lay, and then las, right? But I can't have lay and las. I can't have two L's together. So I'm actually going to change that middle one to say. So, recetense las, and I'm going to count four back, recetense las, because I added two pronouns. Next one, enfermera. Ya cheque los signos, okay, so I already checked the vital signs of this patient. For that reason, don't check them from her, okay, or him. So, no se los che, oops, I'm running out of room, che, or, uh, yeah, I said enfermera. I think I would have put that in the uh, two form. Hold on a second. Yeah, I put that in the two form. Now, granted, I didn't use a name. I just said nurse. I'm just imagining, like, Grey's Anatomy. So I went with the, uh, the two form. But that could also be the usted form. Okay, Berta, this machine is broken, and it's not going to tell you the correct blood pressures. And, and for that reason... Uh, don't take it here. So no, te, I used a first name, so it's te, and then la, because of the blood pressure, and then tomes, because of the negative two command for tomar. So no te la tomes, 
And the last one is, oh my god, 10 seconds. Uh, Paula, why didn't you give the gift to Vilma? Give uh, her...